uh, this topic, what 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 made you decide to tackle a very controversial topic like emotional incest? Because I I'm I'm a woman, okay, and I I date men, right, mm-hmm. and. I have two little boys as well. So um, it's something that I'm aware of because I am a uh, licensed therapist, but I see it a lot in our community, you know, and I see how it affects the women that I come into contact with because they're dating men as well. Right. So I see the effects of emotional incest in their adult relationships with their partners. Right. And I've also um, dated someone and been with men that were raised in an emotional incest environment. So it has impacted my relationships, you know, as an adult, uh, I'm a widow. So I became a widow in 2017. So, and at that time, my, my boys were two and three years old. The third, the three-year-old was turning four, um, like the next month. So I had like a two and four-year-old. And when, when people would come up and, you know, check on me and they would say, you know, hey, and they would talk to the the, the oldest one, which was like four, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you got to be the man of the house. And, you know, just that comment is that's part of emotional incest, you know, um, just kind of putting that burden of a man on a child. And it's just I would correct them immediately. Uh, this is a kid. This, this is a child. He's not the man of the house. I'm not robbing him of his childhood because something traumatic happened to me within my adulthood, you know? Um, so it's just, it's a very common thing that I personally see. And I know other people are affected by it, but I know sometimes you don't have a name to put on it. And sometimes you don't really, you're not aware that it's something that's unhealthy until you know, you learn more about the topic. So I wanted to bring that to my, um, to my listeners, because it's something that we should learn more about for yeah. sure. Yeah. And can you give a little more uh, detail? And I should have asked you about that earlier, a little more detailed description as far as emotional incest, because some people it can throw off. And you talked about being uh-huh. the man of the house, because I know I've, I've been put in that same boat. So, um, Emotional incest is also called in- enmeshment, right? Mm-hmm. And basically it means that an adult parent, either man or woman, mom or dad, is putting a certain level of their needs onto the child, right? It's very commonly seen in the Black household if the mom is a single mother, she's raising her her children and she's kind of needing all of this support, emotional support from her children so she's replacing the man that was there maybe the man left maybe the man died maybe the man ran off with someone else who knows but now she's expecting her children to fulfill those emotional needs and you know it it robs the child of their innocence and robs them of their childhood um it puts them in a place that is very unhealthy and it actually makes them mature a little older than they need to be because they're not even allowed to have regular kid emotions they they think they're the man of the house so they kind of start to exude all these you know exaggerated you know masculine you know uh, emotions and characteristics and it's like you're you're 10 relax, mm-hmm, relax mm-hmm. you know but they just feel like I have to be the man and they don't know what that means you know so they're kind of portraying this image of a man and they're being that man to their mother which is completely that's where the emotional incest title comes from because it's completely um inappropriate mm-hmm. within that relationship yeah so that's what it means that's that's the definition of it mm-hmm. yeah thanks for breaking that down because I just you know for the listeners and the viewers yeah. want to you know, because they like, what, what are they talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds crazy, but it's yeah. it's it's a real thing. And it's more common than than we think, right? It's very common. People don't know that it's inappropriate and they think that it's it's okay to kind of rely on their children in this way. You know, it's they think it's okay, it's it's a natural thing. And I don't know if it's if it's a cultural thing for us that it's just passed down because a lot of our culture, there, there, there is an absence of, of fathers within the household. So you have a lot of mothers raising boys and some men that are thinking that this type of behavior within their relationship with their mother is appropriate. And it's mm. really, it's, it's not. Mm, yeah. Because I know when I was listening to the, your podcast, it just kind of took me back to my childhood 
and uh you know i grew up you know i was birthed out of adultery like okay. you know I, so it was one of those things where my dad was never he was he he came over but mm -hmm. he never was like there oh, in the house like living right. with us you know mm -hmm. so when he wasn't there i had to be the man of the house because i had to help raise my little sister while my mom yeah. worked so yeah. she's like man of the house this this whole unspoken language where i'm just like okay i'm the man of the house uh i guess i'll just emulate what i see on tv what i think a man should be absolutely and it, it definitely robs you in a lot of i i see that a lot with the oldest raising the the youngest and it's kind of like they have this large burden of responsibility and it's like you're 12 years old you should not be raising a two-year-old like it's, <laughs> you, know, you, you know growing up it's like can you hang out no i gotta watch my baby sister and it's like mm -hmm. that's not your kid mm -hmm. but a lot of times we do take on those you know those roles because somebody has to do it and in our minds we have to do it because we have to help mommy out so yeah yeah, it's 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 sad, and, I, and like you say, it's more common than we think. But I wish there. Well, I guess we're gonna talk about that. Uh, how how does emotional incest affect children later in life? I know you talked about it a little bit, and does it affect boys and girls the same? Is it the same effect? Um, so it affects. It does affect boys and girls the same to a certain okay. extent. Okay. Um, because it, it it matures them quicker, right? Mm -hmm. So boys, like you say, you kind of have to have this exaggerated version of what a man is based off of what you see on TV and TV is not realistic, right? Mm -hmm. um, it does the same thing for young girls. Young girls often mature and they, you know, the term, oh, they're, they're fast. And it's like, they're mm -hmm. fast because you're putting them in this role of being a little woman, right? Of having to raise their kids. So maybe they think that they're more mature so they can at 14 date an 18 or 19 year old because they feel like, well, I'm just mature for my age because they've been around a lot of adults a lot of adults may not have censored their communication because they're like oh well she she's she's 11 i talk about this with her or they might talk about their adult relationships with the 11 year old so the girl may just you know be fast and the boy may be fast as well so they might be a little more promiscuous as they're growing up because in their mind they're not kids anymore they don't hang out with the kids and play dolls they're they're peers with their parents so they feel like they're adults so it it can affect them the same way um but into adulthood the way that it impacts adults that were raised in that type of environment um multiple ways so there's a fear of abandonment right they have mm -hmm. a fear of abandonment because obviously maybe somebody in their life left so they have that fear. Um, it's hard for them to trust other people. Uh, there is also a lack of setting boundaries, right? Because mm -hmm. they don't know what boundaries is. They they boundaries have never been modeled to them, right? Their mom definitely don't set boundaries because they kind of treat them like they're an adult and they're not, right? Mm -hmm. um, they need constant validation. They need someone to constantly be there and constantly say different things to make them feel better. Um, and they struggle with uh, being assertive. They struggle with standing up for themselves. They struggle with uh, putting their foot down, you know? So it definitely impacts them growing up. And then also, you know, when they have these adult relationships, if they don't know how to set boundaries, that means that that parent that was, that they're, you know, in an emotional incest relationship that that parent thinks that they're the third person within the relationship mm -hmm. because they're not saying, mom, hey, let me put my foot down. Let me set this boundary. Um, so it becomes like a weird dynamic within the relationship because the mama think that the mama make the decisions with the son, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so it, it's, 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 it's toxic. It's yeah. toxic. It's yeah, mm -hmm. because um, and how how well, yeah. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's just that I'm excited about this topic, mm -hmm. um, because it does affect a lot of relationships into adulthood. Um, and and there was I think and I think you talked about it on your podcast that one episode of Ayana with Ace Hood and his mom. Yes, you know, perfect example. That was a perfect example. Um, a lot of times the mothers have groomed their 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 sons to be the man of their dreams right that's mm -hmm. kind of you know they're getting this emotional fulfillment from their uh 
from their son. So uh, 